those who are in delay, those who are in the process right now and they're frustrated, they're they're yeah. they don't have hope anymore for it. Yeah. You've been let down so many times you've quit dreaming. You almost get to the point of breakthrough and then it crashes and you have to restart again. And I feel like the Lord wants you to know that. What's up, guys? Welcome back. This is part two of talking about hiddenness. And so in this episode, we want to give you guys some biblical tools, uh, some things to walk away with, even some solutions to some problems, some questions you guys may, may have been asking and so I just want to throw it to our good friends. Can we all just greet everyone like this? <laughs> Welcome to we part two. Welcome to part two. We haven't chicken Alfredo tonight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how we doing, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Tonight we got Dom, we got Jenna, we got myself, Steve, we got Claudia, and we got my boy Caleb over there. How we doing? It's me, Mario. <laughs> So let's just jump right in. So what are some biblical references, some biblical tools that we can give people that are going to be watching about hiddenness? So I know we talked about Esther in the last mm -hmm. one, but in this one, I just wanted to hit on 1 Kings 17, where it talks about Elijah mm. and how the Lord drew him and literally told him to go to Brook Cherith. And that was where he was going to have the ravens feeding him. He was going to take care of him. Wow where he literally just had to be hidden at the brook. And it says that the key word is hide in verse 3 of First Kings 17, which means and is translated absent of oneself. So Elijah was not instructed to go to the brook and hide so that he would not be found out, to, but to absent himself there, to get alone with God and take in so that he's absenting he's getting everything out like we talked about in the last part he's getting everything of himself out taking in everything of god in order to later give out and become the prophet that the lord had called him to be i love elijah's story i feel like it's such an amazing story of hiddenness because we can talk so much about his life prophesying and him being a great prophet but we forget about where he went first and where the lord drew him into first where the lord fed him and drew everything of Elijah out of Elijah and just, it was just inserted the Lord. And I love all of that because it wasn't just one test at the brook. Mm. After the brook, he was fed by ravens <laughs> and then he goes to the widow's house. Yes. And then he goes through another yep. hidden season or hiddenness <laughs> process where the Lord's like, okay, you've, you've gained victory at the brook. What about at the widow's house? Oh, he goes to the widow's God. house and what happens? His her son dies. dies. And so what so does he do? He's her. got to follow the word of the Lord. Go stretch yourself out over the widow's son. Mm -hmm. Could you just imagine wow. the craziness of what Elijah is experiencing? And we all know he's going to end up at Mount Carmel yeah. and he's about to have the, <laughs> the fire of God. He's about to have his encounter, have all that God does there. Wow. But, but it wasn't know. until he conquered Brooke Cherith, wow. being fed by wow. ravens, so being sustained and growing dependent fully on the Lord. Yeah. And then getting to the widow's house, do it again, do it again, wow. do it again. And then comes Mount Carmel. Oh. And even after he went to Mark Car Mount Carmel, did he ever go back to the brook? Or did he allow himself to be so crushed and drawn out at the brook that the Lord never had to ask him to go back there? Like, did he stay on the mountain, like, to look into his journey of, like, the yeah. valleys and the mountains yeah. and, like, the Lord leading him to different places? Wow. That's so good. So important for us oh, to even, Lord. even as listeners, we're looking for biblical context on how to live this life of hiddenness or the wilderness and how do we walk through it to the fullness that God has for us. And I, I'm even thinking right now of like when we hear the word wilderness what do we what do we tie that to <laughs> yeah. to me i i like to call the the wilderness seasons or the crushing seasons of like the vice grip of heaven yeah. where you are so tight yeah. everything has to come out of you it's your garden of gethsemane season yeah. where jesus was in the garden before knowing he has to endure the cross and he's going to endure the cross out of obedience he's in the garden and what is he saying to the father if it be your will let this cup pass before me Amen. Even in that moment of his darkest hour, he's saying, God, crush everything in me. It, everything in me, he knows he's about to fulfill the cross. But even in that moment, 
he's getting crushed. You guys know that the Garden of Gethsemane literally means the olive press? Yes. Oh, so you crazy. olives, you don't get olive oil without pressing, without olives. pressing olives. So like, what if we begin to identify our season of crushing? <laughs> Please go there, Not Apostle. Not just crushing, but the fire <laughs> too. They mm. have to refine it under fire oh, my Lord. to yeah. get the, all the impurities out of it. So yeah. good, okay. I'm so glad you touched on this. And then Steve, I want to hear from you too. But I just have to, okay, you're talking about Gethsemane. I literally preached a whole message about this. I talked about the difference between potency and popularity. Oh. And that oh. a lot of people seek popularity. There's something about a pure voice that carries potency. Yeah. And you can tell when something's been watered down and you can tell when something is really potent. Like, I know you're into essential oils, Jenna, but maybe you're into <laughs> essential oils. But you can tell the difference between, yeah. like, that TJ Maxx essential oil oh, and then, like, on. that Young Living <laughs> doTERRA oh, lavender oh, oil. Oh. Like, you could just tell that one is from TJ Maxx. You know, no shame. Fuck you know what I'm saying? It still smells good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It still, it still smells, smells good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's something about the potency yeah. so cool. that you can tell when something is more quality, a yeah. quality type oil. The same with yeah. olive oil. Yeah. I, you smell that great value brand, nothing against great value olive oil. But then you go to like somebody's house and they got like that fresh it, imported, it, it fresh imported from Italia, you know what I'm saying? Oh and that oil, there's just a different mm. smell to it because Whoa. it's more potent. Yep. And so there's something about when you have been in the oil press, mm -hmm. which it's so crazy because because olives to get the oil you have to crush them and so it's like even the biblical context of like the garden of gethsemane gethsemane yes. meaning yes. oil press but there was a potency to jesus's yeah. life mm. and so there's a lot of popular voices out there but they're actually not oily mm. they actually have not gone through pressing seasons Whoa. to where like their voice carries a potency and their life carries a fragrance about them that's like no i didn't go to walmart to get that i went to gethsemane oh you know what i'm saying and listen <laughs> so and if you want to break the yoke of bondage you need the anointing oh, it's the anointing that breaks man. the yoke not the not the the common voice oh. the popular voice it's the anointing that breaks the yoke fan into your season of crushing that produces the anointing that will break the yoke off a of generation yes yes steve yeah, that's, oh my God. That's, <laughs> this is Steve, everyone. Hey, how we doing? Hey. He's, always behind, or he's always behind the camera. Yeah, now he's up front. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Because he's got something good to uh, say. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> no, those, these, these seasons of, of hiddenness, these seasons of the wilderness seasons, mm. they're, they're an invitation to die. Mm. You know, I know in my, in my seasons where I would just go in, in hiddenness with the Lord, I was dying every single Man. day. And it, there's there's such beauty in it. I think when people hear about wilderness or they hear about, you know, this these hidden seasons, it's it's so beautiful because it's it's an invitation to just be with the Lord deeper and deeper and cultivate that oil. The oil comes from the secret place with the Lord. Amen. And I just remember, you know, my my times in the uh, in the secret place in the hidden place with the Lord. Those were the seasons that made me, and I wanted nothing more to be in the in the wilderness. I didn't even know it was a wilderness, but I was just with Whoa. the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, I didn't wow, I didn't wow. think I'm yeah. like I didn't even know I was here until someone told me that that was a wilderness. Season. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, this, that was a beautiful season in my life because I was just with the Lord, and I wanted nothing more than that. So I, I it started from me just crying out to the Lord. It was an invitation. My tears were an invitation for the Lord to deliver me out of that bondage that I was in. Mm -hmm. And I was even talking to Don today about, you know, in uh, in Exodus, when when the Lord visits Moses, he said, I've heard my people's cries. I've seen their oppression. So the tears from the people wow. were an invitation to the Lord to deliver them out of bondage. Oh so it's just like, oh, oh, my gosh, the Lord was speaking that Lord the other day. And I was like, wow, you know, that's so good. So the tears were an invitation. I, I remember crying for 45 minutes saying, Lord, please help me. And I could feel the invitation come and be with me. And that was a two, three-year journey of just Bruh. the wilderness. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And that was my favorite season. As things were happening, you know, people around me were, were dying. And this wow. and that was just, it was horrible going through divorce, all this Man. stuff. I was like, Lord, th this was my favorite season with you because I grew so Ooh. intimate with you five, six, seven hours in the secret place, waking up and just being with him. Those, those are beautiful seasons. And that's what we got to come back to. So I'll just encourage everyone just watching, say, yeah. 
when you're going through the season, Lord, help me to see you through the midst of what I'm going through. So and you'll be able to see him through the midst of the storm. Man. So it's a perspective shift. Yep. It's like yep. even you kept saying invitation. Yep. Yep. And it's like we don't see wilderness seasons or hidden seasons as the honor that you receive the when honor. when a when a when when a couple sends you their wedding invitation mm. to like one of the most yeah, special yeah. seasons yeah. of their life. And oh you're like, gosh. man, like I'm invited. Yeah. Mm. And I just keep like, Ooh. I literally just saw that like the wilderness is almost like an, a, a wedding invitation. Yes. And uh, man, it's an honor to go to this yeah. place with you rather oh. than like, oh, here we go again. Yeah, right. You oh, know what I'm right. saying? And even oh. just, I, I just mm. heard this too, Steve, while you were talking that there's wonder in wilderness seasons. Mm. There's a wonder of who he is in awe and revelation i know we touched on that last but just like wow. there's wonder in the wilderness mm. i think that a lot of times we attach weariness to waiting seasons and god i need my strength to be renewed like the eagle and it's okay let's shift our perspective let's look up and instead of growing weary let's grow in wonder <laughs> have any of y'all have seen the movie inside out Yes. 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 So when yes. Riley's yes. brain, like the family, all of that, the fun side, the family, all of the island started shutting down, what took it in her, which character took it so that came and saved her so that she could feel joy again? It had to take sadness. The tears had to come. She had to break down, which broke down all the walls so that she could feel the joy again and those islands could be rebuilt into new mountains and new islands. But it took having to feel sadness. It took sadness yeah. having to save the day. And the whole time, joy and fear and all of them were trying to keep sadness away from touching the core memories. But it was her touching the core memories that actually saved Riley's life from running away. Like, she had to feel the sadness. I really feel like we have an opportunity right now to go into those who are in delay those who are in the process right now and they're frustrated they're they're yeah. they don't have hope anymore for it yeah. you know, i'm reminded in proverbs 17 it says hope deferred makes the heart sick let's camp out on the first portion of that verse hope deferred makes the heart sick mm. when things have not gone your way you begin to feel that disappointment that turmoil. I feel like I'm prophesying to somebody Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. You have been enduring through season after season of disappointment. You almost get to the point of breakthrough and then it crashes and you have to restart again. And I feel like the Lord wants you to know that the second half of that verse, don't camp out on the first part. Read the second. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. That's it. A promise fulfilled is a tree of life. There's something about the waiting. There's something about the, the pause. It's something about the silence that causes us to yearn. It causes wow, us to wait. Wow, wow. It causes us to tarry. You know, yeah. when you talk about the wedding invitation, my mind just begins to swirl about how we're, we are in the biggest wedding invitation of our life. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And listen, and we're talking about oil. Yet there were five foolish and five wise. Yeah. The five that had oil in their lamps, had oil aside, they got to enter into the wedding supper of the lamb. Mm. So listen, we're either going to buy oil now or we're going to be robbed of our wedding invitation. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. We, it, the cost is too great. The cost is too big. I'm telling you, we've got to look into these wilderness seasons as a joy, as I'm going to tarry with the king of kings oh, until he gosh. delivers me. So I'm going to knock day in and day out, and I'm going to say, God, I'm coming after you. Mm. Not for my delivery of, or my destination of ministry, <laughs> yeah. but I'm coming yeah. after you because I want to know you more for the time that when you do. And listen, maybe it's not, and I know you're about to burst, but <laughs> we've got to get into the generational oh, thing too God. because maybe it isn't even about us fulfilling the promise of God. It's about our kids inheriting the promises of God. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, Hold on, before you go into, I'm about to explode. <laughs> All right. Before you go into generational legacy, and I know my husband got something too. I'm about to explode, and I, 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 I know you got something. I'm, I'm, sitting, back I'm, I'm, I'm sitting back and receiving. I'm sitting back and receiving. But going back even to what you were talking about, that we are in the biggest wedding invitation really? right now. Can you imagine if there's anyone that understands waiting seasons, it's the son of man. 
Because oh. right now, we are in a time and season in the earth. It's the birth pangs. If there's anyone that understands waiting seasons, it's Jesus. Because he's over here waiting at the right hand of the Father. When can I go back to oh. my bride? Your name, because your name, my your calling, name. my calling is to be joined with humanity. I feel the Holy Spirit. Oh. My calling, Jesus came so that he can he can tie and bring in the gap and bridge the gap between mm. humanity and the separation he came and tore the veil between god and humanity That's and so now good. he's waiting to come back and restore restore mm. everything completely to its fullness and so if there's anyone that's under that understands waiting so it's jesus yeah, he so waited good. he waited even before he came for his first coming because he knew that he was going to come then <laughs> and then he waited even we didn't even go into this but like jesus being a carpenter yeah, yeah, can yeah, you yeah. Th talk about like humility and wilderness <laughs> and process i would love for you guys to go into yeah. that but yep, just yep. even going back to what you were saying dom it's like whoa there is a revelation even on waiting seasons connected to the longing. And it's not even just about us longing. We need to have a bigger picture. Yes. We need to have yes. an eternal mindset of That's like, it. wait, this life is but a vapor. Yep. We will be gone tomorrow. So we're That's all it. worried about when we're going to have the next platform and stage. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Jesus is like, that's not the full story. Yeah. The full story is not you getting a platform, but it's you being a pure and spotless bride and me coming back for you. But maybe oh. you would become more pure and spotless ah! if you stop worrying about popularity and platforms. Yes. I'm yes. done. I consider it Whoa. all rubbish. Yes. Paul says, I consider it all trash. <laughs> Some translation says, I consider it all dumb. That's it. That's it. Then just to know him more. Then just to know him more. What if we woke up every day rather than saying, God, where's my ministry? I want to know you more. Yeah. So where's good. my knowing you more? So good. Where's, me, where's my transforming myself? Where's my renewing my mind? Where's, where's me tearing off my idea of what ministry might look like and let me just carry my cross? Man. I think of, I think of the, the, the season when Jesus was enduring the cross. Mm -hmm. Even he had, he needed help. To carry the cross. So we, we've got to be carrying our crosses more than ever right now. If we're in a wilderness season, pick that cross up. As Steve said, we've got to crucify our flesh, crucify the dreams of ministry yep. for the sake of what it might do for a generation. Listen, you were talking about Jesus the first 30 years of his life. Oh he was a hidden, unknown carpenter who was working on his craft. He was working on his skill. I know, Caleb, you could go off oh, on no, this. I'm, <laughs> this I'm receiving, y'all. <laughs> just working on his craft to just have three years of ministry. 30 years versus three being known. And it's like that first 30 years, every day, sun up to sundown, he was just working with the Lord, working on being a carpenter. Okay. What about the woman? I know this is about to fire up the room. Ah! Let oh, faith man. arise. Perfect. What if we all when we when we talk about Jesus feeding the five thousand? <laughs> yes. Please hey. let, let me let my spouse <gasps> who's caught this. Oh, let me gosh. let her share this. Oh, talk oh, about being gosh. hidden for one moment, bro. Oh. I could cry when I talk <laughs> about this. When Jesus fed the five thousand, it was a little boy. That came up to the disciples and said, here's my lunch. Like, I don't know who you can this feed, right. but here it is. Here's my loaves and my fishes. Who packed that little boy's lunch? His hidden mother. Who was literally <sighs> just doing her job as a mom. Wow. Packing yeah, her kid's right lunch. Now. Led to leading one of the biggest miracles that Jesus performed, feeding the 5,000. Just because you're not on a platform does not mean you're insignificant. I just feel that so strongly that we weigh insignificance because we don't have some big platform. The hidden inner. What about the grandmother that prayed Caleb into the fold? What about the praying grandmothers who all they did was pray? And we're here today to reap the benefit of that because we get to fellowship with Jesus. What if that was all that we longed for? What if we just said, I, I value others over myself. I value Caleb getting exalted on the earth rather than myself. I, I value your ministry over my own. I value your needs over my own. The basic 
act of Christianity is preferring yeah. one another. That's it. Not my needs. That's it. We're selfish. It. We've. I, I'm selfish. I'm. I'm. If without Christ, I'm nothing but a man. That's that's so good. I can I can remember when I was just in a time when I was in the secret place and I was just weeping before the Lord. And I said, Lord, please don't let anybody see me. Wow. I only want them to see you. I said, please hide my face, Lord. You know, and I, I get, you know, we got to be on cameras and we got to get the word out there. But Lord, please don't see. Let them not see me. Let them see you. Wow. Let them just see your face. You know, we've made we've made ministry all about platforms and, and yeah. building our names. But what about building his name? Yes. That's what it's about. We gotta lift his name up. Christianity has just been so backwards. When we forgot about the sun, we forgot about Jesus, we forgot about his face, but we've we've built ministries just upside down. We forgot who it was about. Let people not see us. Yes. Man, it's so good. Yeah, I think that it you know, even in that you know, the least among you is the servant. That's it. The least among you is the servant. If I serve faithfully in ministry but miss my kids at home, I've failed. Yeah. If I serve faithfully in ministry and miss my spouse, I've failed. And I have not honored God. I could preach the greatest message, say the biggest whatever, but if I don't love my wife and kids and set them f- up to, to, to serve God all the days of their life, I've failed. God has entrusted us with things, and we, we, we prioritize them so out of order. We prioritize getting the name and fame when I've got my name and fame here. I have my legacy at home, my three kids that are going to carry my name on when I die. What are, how can I set them up for the 18 possible years that I'll have my kids at home? How can I set them up to take the name of God further than I could ever in my time frame? What if we thought generationally rather than individually? Mm, what, so what, if, what if we began that. to think about the generations to come? Because Jesus was a generational and is a generational God. He's not focused on just his ministry. He's, fin- he's focused on the church, his bride, and us all not looking so inwardly, but rather saying, God, how can I take the, 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 the image off myself and put it on someone else? How can I pray my kids into the fire of God so that my ceiling will be their floor yes. and wow. they can spring off of it? Yeah. And what if the parable of the talents isn't just about finances? It's not just about what he's given us to steward as our gifts and our callings. But what if it's about our kids and how we're stewarding them and how we're investing in them? Mm. What if that was it? All all I can think about is what God did with me in the season coming to North Carolina and how I got these heavy prophetic words, like all these different things, even about my my future wife. And I was like, you kidding me? Like, really? And I remember how I just up and moved after being at a church for 20 plus years and I up and moved, came to Hickory, North Carolina and started Atlanta, from Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. You were traveling, traveling like full time music. music. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'm ready to step into, I'm ready to step into this promise. And I start to work at a warehouse hmm. folding sides of styrofoam wilderness stuff. I'm like, what is happening right now? Get like, I'm like, Lord, what? And then, I mean, all I can think about is Joseph. He had the dream. And he ended up in the in the palace, but it wasn't without the process. It wasn't without the prison. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. He had the dream and everything. I mean, he's like, oh, I'm doing this. I'm do-. And God had to lead him through a series of events. And for him to say what you meant for evil, brothers, God meant for good. And I think at the end of the, at the end of that process for all of us, if we can say that, if we can truly say that, then I think that there's an invitation for us and the invitation doesn't stop with like one thing. That's good. There's a constant invitation. It's not like I've received it and now I'm, I'm here. It's like, 
okay, this invitation is onto another invitation, yeah. and that invitation is onto another invitation, yeah. and so you never graduate from it. And that's what I'm learning. I remember when I asked this question to the Lord, I said, Lord, why do you why do you have me here? I used to play on, you know, travel around, play on these stages, and He literally just answers me with just like the gentle, like a gentle, kind voice with what I asked Him. It's because you asked that question. Wow. <laughs> wow. And I'm like. If our if our whys can turn to what are you doing in the process, then then I think then we can receive in the invitation with a good heart. So good. <laughs> if it wow. if it if it it's okay to ask why. Even Job asked why, mm-hmm. but then he, but then he found out the what. Yeah, Lord, what so are you doing good. so my eyes can see? Yeah, yeah, and and I'm even just like thinking about how we can encourage listeners today to f- be filled with hope. To be filled with encouragement that, yes, the wilderness and seasons of hiddenness are hard because you know there's a promise at the end of it. You know there's something coming greater than the pain or you've been circling the mountain, but you have yet to get to the top of the mountain. I want to encourage you guys that in Habakkuk 2, I'm reading out of the message. I'm not a big message version fan, but I love the wording in this and I'm a big language guy. I think it means a lot. And the, the topic or the, the subtitle in Habakkuk 2 says, full of self, but my soul is empty. And verse 2 says, and then God answered, write this, write what you see, write it out in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. The vision or this vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait and it doesn't lie. If it seems slow in coming, wait. It's on the way. It will come right on time. Guys, if we thought more about the faithfulness of God coming right on time, we would not worry. We would not wrestle because God's timing is perfect. Let's just hit the cliche. God's timing is perfect. We think that we know his timing better. But guys, he, he knows best. I'm even remembering in my season where I'm like, God, accelerate me get me there god's like yeah i'll accelerate the pruning yeah I'll, yeah I'll accelerate the fire so that you can get burnt up so that when the time does come you'll be prepared mm. just have so be encouraged today yeah. that the time is coming for your promise to be fulfilled your answer to prayer maybe some of you are asking the lord for children the I literally was just, I literally was just feeling that. Yeah. And when I, you were done, I wanted to go into I, I that. I feel it so strongly. Yeah. I just even feel like those of you who have been praying, asking God for children. We stand in faith that right now, yes. your time is coming. Yes. The season is approaching. We yes. prophesy That's over yes. the listeners that are longing to see their own offspring show up. Your season is coming. We believe in faith with you right now. That hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a promise fulfilled is a tree of life. Thank and we Jesus. just prophesy, Father, open up the womb. Yes. of those mothers yes, of those God. women yes, asking God. for children father open them up and mm. give them the fruit of their labors Thank in the Lord. name of jesus in this season father mm. open them up for their promise yes. hallelujah wow yes, this is so wild man the spirit of god is so here i literally as you were talking dom all i saw was women waiting to have children yeah. wow. and dealing with infertility yes. wow. and you literally after two minutes went into that thank it's you, like jesus thank you Holy Spirit. so clear so that's why i i never want to be in balance to where we only talk about pruning and process yes, but yes. not about the promise oh, there's just so much emphasis on promise and and purpose and i mean you can listen to ted talks and they'll talk you up talk to you up and down about purpose and all of that kind of stuff but there's just something that we can learn mm-hmm. before the promise comes that's so, so that when the promise comes we are all the more grateful. Yes. Mm. We are all the more thankful. Yes. We all the more give the glory to him rather than give the glory to ourselves yeah. and testify of his goodness. Yeah. The whole waiting with having, giving birth and all of that. I'm reminded of both. What is, is it Isaiah 60 where he says, do I not bring forth to the point of labor and not yeah. give birth? And then speaking about Israel, and then I also am just thinking of Hannah's prayer when she prayed and wailed and groaned and travailed and like the waiting brought out the travail. Dom was talking about tarrying earlier and you learn to tarry and like that's what it's waiting on the Lord. It's travailing with the Lord to see your promise 
birth. And then once it came, it was Samuel. And she literally promised to the Lord, I'd give my son to you. I will give my son to your house if you just fulfill this promise. And he fulfilled it. And then she gave Samuel to the house of Eli. And he like literally prophesied over Eli. It was at three, four, five years old and like started prophesying over his whole family because of Hannah's travailing. And her groanings to see that promise come to pass, to see it birthed. She was literally made into a midwife before she was midwifed into her promise. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. Come on. Let's go. Yeah, I I was even thinking of in in the waiting seasons, we can can rest in his scripture. We can rest in his word. You know, I'm thinking of Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not just about the plans to prosper and all this stuff. It's the fact that he knows. Mm. So we can just oh, be yeah. resting in the fact yeah. that he knows the plans. And that's all I need. And that's what got me through my wilderness wow. season was mm. that I didn't know. He didn't show me what was going to happen next. Yeah. He didn't show me, you know, my destiny. Or, you know, I didn't get all these prophetic words about all the stuff that was going to happen. I was just resting in the fact that he knows. And I'm okay with that. Wow. So if the Lord knows, what, does it really matter if you know? I don't think it does. No. You're stirring me up here. I, I'm even just like wanting to encourage the listeners today that you've been let down so many times you've quit dreaming. Mm-hmm. And I feel like the Lord's saying, dream again. So good. Dream again, so son. Good. Dream again, daughter. <laughs> you've given up maybe on your dreams because they didn't happen quick enough or they didn't happen when you thought they would or you were you could see it and then you got set back. Yeah. You were close, and then you had a a setback. Yeah. I, I even feel like there's somebody who lit, watching who's like, man, I've backslidden too many times. Mm. Listen, it's the grace of God that'll run you down, and it'll pick you right back up. See, we think that when we fail, we're taught all through elementary, when you fail, you start back over, That's it. not with God. Mm. When you fail with God, he comes right back to you, picks you up, says, let's yeah. move on from here. Yeah. See, he's not, a ju- he's not this taskmaster this this just slamming judge who's looking to prosecute you he's a loving father who wants to see your promise fulfilled more than you do he wants to see you bear children he wants to see you step into your rightful place why because he's a father some of us maybe didn't have healthy fathers who didn't champion us in the things that we long for or we love Mm. yet god the father is up there our biggest champion our biggest rooting Oh, you can do this. You can press in a little harder. That's you it. can. You, Caleb's bleeding out on the ground. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you can do this, That's son. That's He's it. with us That's in the it. fight and in the turmoil That's and in the wrestling and in the wine press. He's 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 pressing with us until that breakthrough. And then you know why he's pressing with with us so that when we celebrate the victory, we point it right back to him. Man. This was you, God. Man. This was you seeing me through to my pros, my promise. This was you pushing me through when I. I had nothing. I think of like trying to climb up a hill and we've got nothing left. Jesus comes and he pushes with us and he walks it with us. We can't yet forget that he's a loving and able father to do far more exceedingly and abundantly than we could ask for, think, or imagine. Let us not get small minded. Let us not box God in. But let's dream again, friends. Let's actually get outside of our vain conceit and say, oh, God, you're actually bigger than my imagination. Yeah. You're actually bigger than my my wildest dreams, and you're able to fulfill them. I feel like we had the best of both worlds where it's like, hey, man, I need to carry my cross because that's where I learn my spiritual muscles. Mm-hmm. Yes. You can't carry a cross with muscle atrophy. That's so good. You, you, you really can't. And so you learn in those seasons when you're carrying a cross, you're, you're, you're gaining muscle. You're actually gaining muscle. Yeah. But. On the flip side of that, after you've been processed, God is like, man, as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a double portion yeah. because you stood it. That's what the crazy thing about first Samuel is that the the husband was prophetically giving Hannah a double portion wow. before she received Samuel. Wow. He would come and give her a double portion. Oh, literally. Wow. I'm like, man, I never noticed that. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. It said that it said that he literally would come to her in her barrenness and give her a double portion. And then. God gave her Samuel. Even when we look at the cross and we go and we just look at the simple gospel, when there is death, there is always resurrection. 
in the Christian life. And so when all you see is death and setbacks and Mm -hmm. disappointment and discouragement without a grave, there's no glory without death. There's no resurrection. I'm telling you you, when Caleb and I, this is the grace podcast. This is, you know, on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, it's the Caleb and Claudia YouTube channel. But when we were going through premarital counseling, um, even our name, we got like a revelation of the just even the biblical significance of our name mm. in that in hindsight, when you look at things through a natural eye, it's like, oh, yeah, your name, like Claudia and Caleb Graves. That means death. You yeah. know, you think of graves, you think of a graveyard, graveyard, you think of a funeral, you think of loss. But biblically, when there's graves, there's always glory. Yeah. There's always resurrection life. And so I just even want to encourage you guys in the same spirit that my brother Dom brought and my sister Jenna and Steve, we want to end this where you leave feeling like, you know what? I may see death and discouragement, but I'm going to shift my perspective and see with the lens and the eyes of the spirit and that there's, there's resurrection coming. There's life coming. And so we just want you guys to leave encouraged with that. There was yeah. so much biblical tools yeah. and biblical references. Go back and listen to this again with your Bible open. Yeah. If That's you it. have yeah. to, go in and study those passages yeah. and let hope begin to arise. Yeah. Let resurrection life begin yeah. to encourage you in whatever season it is that you're in. And if you are out of a wilderness season, maybe you're going to watch this and just explode with praise and thanksgiving like lord i never want to forget the israelites they they needed to remember egypt not so that they can stay in the hopelessness that egypt brought but so that they can be reminded of what god brought them out of so that it could restore a fresh praise and thanksgiving and (laughs) and hope to god and even hope to others and so we hope you leave encouraged with that. Let's go ahead and end this video with our friends just introducing who they are, just really yeah. briefly what they do. Steve, you weren't in the last one, so why don't we go ahead and just introduce you. Tell us who you are, what you do, all the things. Yeah, hey, how's it going, guys? My name is uh, Steve. I work at the Alter Global. I'm the media director. I moved uh, to North Carolina about four years ago, and now I'm working with uh, all of these guys. I actually started working with uh, Claudia hey, back in the day. Together, yeah. yeah, we worked together. Back in the day. Dude, I remember. We still work together. Yeah. Just not that often. I remember every 8 a.m. she'd call me and she'd be hollering. This girl is so loud. I'd be like, man, girl, I haven't even had my coffee yet. Come on. So love these, love these guys right here. I'm Jenna, Dom's wife. And, yeah, I work with ARC Fellowship and Alter Global now. Hey. I kind of slid in after Claudia and she's been <laughs> kind of my mentor over here. Oh. It's so funny because I we had a job interview. Like I literally so interviewed crazy. crazy to work for the Alter Global when we sold everything and went on the road. I put a job application in to work for the Alter Global oh, because Jeremiah's wife was like, oh Jenna loves social media. Like she'd kill it. And then Claudia on the phone was like do you know how to work like big production cameras? And I was like, I thought this was just for social media. She's like, yeah, we do e-courses and all these things. And I was like, I can learn. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, well, I can't teach you because I'm trying to wait this thing on my own too. But Yo. so crazy. So, so it's so like bad. such a full circle yeah. moment full circle. to like be working there now and all the things. But it's amazing. So now we work together. And hey, somebody. It's great. <laughs> and I'm Dom. I'm the youth pastor at the Ark Fellowship. Uh, love getting to be married to this amazing, beautiful woman of God. And uh, getting to serve the next generation. Uh, love Gen Z. Uh, love all the generations. I'm a millennial, but love Gen Z. Love to get to speak into them every single week and uh, put my hand to the plow. But uh, love you guys so much. Thanks again for this mm-hmm. tremendous opportunity. And uh, this bless my heart. This really wow. so we good. are so honored. Thank you guys for your time. and driving an hour and having three kids and steve i know you don't have kids but hey we yeah bring him in (laughs) bring his wife in he's single i'll just point it out (laughs) how we doing how we doing (laughs) so guys we've had so much fun we've been challenged and encouraged guys we went to the threshing floor and we went to the palace so lord we just we just bless our, our listeners and our watchers. God, and we thank you that with every view, with every click, God, that people are encountered, souls are encountered, they're encouraged and transformed. God, by your word and by your spirit. 
So, Lord, right now, God, we ask for you to flood the airwaves, flood the airwaves, cars, God, schools, wherever this may reach, God, would your glory be known. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You guys be great, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.